Hey what's up YouTube, in this video I'll be showing you how to make the Home Alone house, aka Kevin McAllister's house, aka the McAllister family home, or as I've been calling it, this giant mansion, this thing is absolutely huge, I never even realised how massive this thing was, but this was an absolute blast to design and make, I really really love the movie, and I think that I have done a pretty good job, hopefully you recognise a lot of stuff from the movie, there are a couple of easter eggs hidden here, there and everywhere, and hopefully you will have spotted a few of them from this little preview. If you enjoy this tutorial, please do remember to hit that like button, it would help me out so, so, so much. It would be the best Christmas present that you could give me, I would love that. And try and watch this video all the way to the end, I dare you. Also, this is a little niche, but a gold star for anybody that can tell me the name of this van in the comment section. Here is the amount of space required to make the house a 55 by 69 block area, as represented by this red concrete grid on the ground. It's absolutely massive, so if you do plan on building this, Anywhere near anything else, I would highly recommend making the grid. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make our house. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those materials and enough of them as well. Step one, ladies and gentlemen, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid. If you've made it, count to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And then inwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We're going to start off by placing two terracotta on top of each other. 1, 2. And then 10 brick blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then extend that 10th block to the right by 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Extend towards us by 2, 1, 2. Extend right by 29, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Then extend inwards again by 2, 1, 2. And then extend right by 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We now want to start extending backwards. First of all, we're going to extend back by 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I would like it if we could just mark this area out. Like if you extend this row all the way down to the ground, eventually making it so that the bottom two blocks are terracotta, so something like this, because this is actually a crucial point in the house that we'll be coming back to. However, once you have done that, we're going to come back up to this 13th block, and we're going to extend it across the back of the build by 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then we're going to extend towards us by 2, 1, 2, and then right by 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then inwards by 2, 1, 2. And then right by 26, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And if that 26th block lines up with the front of the build, then we have done everything correctly. We can then extend the back corner of the build all the way down to the ground like this, once again making sure to make the bottom two blocks terracotta. So this is the kind of floor plan that we should have so far. Now this isn't exactly how the house is laid out, 
but it's, it's pretty close. So what I want to do now is come back towards the back right hand corner of the build. You can remember when we kind of like marched this down to the ground because I, I said that it was important. Well, now we're actually going to do something about it. I want you to extend each one of these terracottas out the back of the build by six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the same with the upper row. Then, on top of the row, zuh, I want you to place from the left four upside down quartz stairs, one, two, three, four, and then stick two brick blocks on the end, one, two, Place four rows of brick on top, one, two, three, four, and then extend to the left. You can then fill this little area in here using white stained glass pane or regular glass. I'd use one of the two. And honestly, whilst we are here, we might as well fill in this front part too. So not only are we going to extend across the back, but just whilst we're here, I want you to extend the terracottas forwards. So just like this, so both terracottas. The point is that these want to line up with the front of the house, just as we want all of the terracottas to do eventually, and you can even connect them up, like you can take this end row here and join them up if you like, just to make sure that everything does go together. I'm then going to add an extra row of brick inside the left, inside the right side of this giant empty space. Then, I want to, on both sides, have two rows of four upside down smooth quartz stairs. One, two, three, four and one, two, three, four. Two bricks in between them, and then we're gonna extend the two bricks upwards. So, this is just going to split everything in half, just like this. Three rows of glass on top of the white window sills, which are the quartz stairs. Then two rows of just regular facing bricks on top of these, so we don't alternate them, we don't like place upside down ones or anything on top because I, I quite like this effect right here. And then just to finish this off, we are going to place white stained glass pane once again inside these empty spaces. So this is going to create a set of windows. So here, and here, and here. Perfect. So we just want to have something which should look like that. That is perfect so next up we're going to come to the back of the house and we're going to start extending the back of the house across a little bit so i want you to take the terracottas that we have here and we are going to it, it might actually be better first of all actually just putting the brakes on this a little second it'd be better if we took the brick framework here and extending it, extended it all the way down to the ground. So, from this position here, you can see this like sticky out part of brick. So, from like here, all the way to the left here, if we can just take all of these bricks and extend them down to the ground, there's not really too many details on the back of the house other than a chimney, and the house is actually like an interesting shape on the back, but it's basically just a chimney and windows. So, there's, there's not really too many much to account for. There's a couple of little mini roofs as well. Um, there is the, I'm sure that if you guys have watched Home Alone, I'd, I'm guessing most of you have if you're watching this video, then we have kind of like the basement entrance back here as well. There also happens to be a back door with a cat flap in it. Unfortunately, I, we don't have the cat flap, but we want to also, I'm just going to continue extending all of this down to the ground. Um, this is kind of like the kitchen. Uh, I'm sure you might remember Kevin with a BB gun. <laughs> Or a pellet rifle, I'm, I'm, I guess it's probably a pellet rifle, I, I, if there is a difference. I think that they're probably the same thing, really. Um, when, I think it's Marv, like, shoves his head through a cat flap here and he, he gets shot right in the forehead. Um, so this is, like, where the back door would be and then this is, like, the basement entrance. And then not much is really seen other than that of the back, although you do get, like, a nice, decent 
wide shot of the rest of the back of the house, but it's it's very fleeting. But it basically, it just displays that there's like a chimney over over here on the right side, and it's just windows. Like there's there's not really too much more than that. But uh, as I do keep mentioning, the house is an interesting shape, though. So this is what I wanted to do so far. So this is what I wanted to do, like extend all of this down, because I feel as though this just gives us a better idea of what we're doing next because I want to take these two outward rows of terracottas and I want to extend them to the right. I'm going to extend them to the right by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 like this. So both of them and then I'm going to extend them back and join them to the build just like this. I'm then going to, I'm just going to brick this up actually, and then we can add the details. We'll like carve the details into the brick, so to speak. I just think it, it will be a little bit easier. We don't have all of the materials that we actually need either. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, the door, but I get, we might be able to grab it. On the back of the build, we actually have... Like, halfway up the house, we are going to place some snow, and we're actually going to, like, jump up a level. So, the back door is going to look like it's suspended off the ground, but it's, it's actually not really. I want you to take the right side of the upper row of terracotta, and I want you to go left by one, two. Stick an and in sight stair here. Destroy three rows above, one, two, three, and actually add a fourth. There we go, perfect. So I'm going to stick a brick stair here, white glass pane below, and this is where the door level will be. Like I said, I wish there was a cat flap also. To the left of here, we're going to leave a gap of one between the window, and then we're going to have, we're going to destroy two blocks, and then a row underneath, and a row above. We're going to have brick stairs at the top of the window, with glass pane below it. And where this window is, is actually where the basement entrance is as well. So like left of this and inside door here, I'm going to stick a brick and extend it towards me by four. One, two, three, four. Leave a gap of two in the wall and then do the same thing. So just like this. We'll grab all of the necessary stuff later, like, we'll add the details as we go on, but what we can do is we can kind of, like, extend these bricks into the ground like so. Just like this. And then, if you want, you can stick, like, polished and inside stairs on the end, just like this. And then, I suppose... No, they, they'll, they, they would be there, and then we can, like, destroy another row below, and then you can kind of get the idea that the basement entrance is going to be about here. Um, we might even drop it, like, another row lower, so, like, here, and then we've got, like, a solid two rows, and then the door would be here, and we could even add a little bit of glass above the door, but you guys get the idea. We're just kind of, like, setting the scene. And we actually have everything that we need for this little mini roof. There's a, a, a little mini roof that surrounds this. If, if you place upside down, smooth quartz stairs all the way around the top of this like, little kitchen extension area, like this. And then if we place polished and inside stairs going around the top of the brick, so just like so. And we want to, I mean, what can we do here? So we, we've got to place some guiding blocks so that we are able to continue this process. But um, I'm, I think that about three rows of andensite should do. Maybe even two rows. You see, uh, across the top of here is going to be upside down quartz stairs. And I might just leave that as is. Or maybe add some andensite slabs on top of here. There wants to be a small window in this particular part of the, uh, in this particular part as well. So this small window kind of wants to be centered where these middle three and inside stairs are. So this is the middle and inside stair. If you kind of like take a look, it's got like four to the left of it, four to the right. So the window wants to line up and it's just going to be like a little row of three. And we're just going to have some white stained glass pane there. So this is kind of like what we want to have going on. So not only do we want to do that, but we are also going to extend down. 
Yeah, I, I think that we will actually extend all of the bricks down and then we'll just carve into the wall. I, I think that that's the easiest thing to do. Because uh, there's another part on the back of this house where... So, by the way, ju I mean, just in, case, in case I didn't lay that out properly, we're going to extend down the rest of the back wall of the house. Um, because the, the back of the house is kind of like a peculiar shape, like... You, you've got some like uh, some one-story part of the houses are joined to two-story parts of the houses like parts stick out like in an unnatural manner um, It's a very interesting shaped house So that's why I think we'll just do this entire wall Obviously if you plan on doing the interior you're gonna have to do a little bit of excavating but um, other than that um, Everything should look good on the outside, so this entire back wall here wants to look like this, and we are missing out on something like I said. So, let's add the windows in to the right side. So, I want you to come to the bottom right hand corner of where we have these bricks. We're going to leave a gap of two, one, two, and then we're going to start destroying. First, a row of four. One, two, three, four, and we're going to stick upside down quartz stairs in here. Then a gap of two, so that's just going to be like one, two, and then we're going to have two quartz stairs. A gap of one, and then destroy two, one, two, and then upside down quartz stairs. And then we're going to have, this is where the chimney comes in. We're actually going to leave a gap of two again, so like one and two. Then we're going to mark out a brick here. The brick is going to extend all the way up to the top of the house and it's going to sit on top of the frame. And I want you to extend the bricks up. <laughs> We're going to have to alter this, but so that they are relatively, they're quite high on the house. Um, the bricks are going to be three rows wide as well, so I've already got one row, two row, three row, like this. And we want these to be high and proud just like this so sticks all the way up like theoretically we would really want to be able to see these from the front of the house and we'll we'll adjust it as we do the roof so now that we have the one row what we want to do now is we want to create like another little extension so what this what basically this means is on the left hand side here where these bricks stick out even further you extend this brick all the way to the right and it kind of like joins to the corner of the chimney we don't want to take out any of the chimney and then we want to raise up the brick area i do believe it's four rows i want to say four so one two three four it wants to be the same as the left side i do believe that this is correct because this is also going to have its own little mini roof yeah there we go that that will be perfect so uh, then we're just going to extend all of these bricks up We'll add its own little tiny mini roof just here. Um, we'll have the upside down quartz stairs and they'll curve around. They'll hit the chimney. They'll hang off the side here. Um, we want to have just two rows of andensite stairs. So here and then here. We'll make that one go sideways in a second. So like we'll turn this one to the side just like so. And that's perfect. Just like this. And then if you want to, like you can then join this down using terracotta and you, you might be wondering to yourself like why why have we waited to add that and then the chimney and all of that like why couldn't we have built that in the in the structure it is it's just because it's like two different levels you can see all the depth that's going on like it's it's a, a peculiar part of the house so all the way over over here on the left we want to have some windows as well um, the windows don't really have like a frame. They're kind of just hanging out. <laughs> they're just kind of like chilling on the side of the house. So um, they're pretty much at the same altitude as the other windows. So, so if you start here on the left and just start with the bricks and move to the right like one, two, three, four, and then move up one, destroy that block, destroy to the right, above, and then another. And then leave a gap of two, so one, two. And then we want to place one, two, three, like this, and then destroy. And it, it, it's just like two random windows in the middle of the wall. There's, there's not even any framing. There's nothing in between them, like the other windows. It's just kind of like a smooth wall, apart from uh, windows like this. So that's perfect. We can just fill them in. 
perfect. Over here on the right is a different story. These follow kind of like the window formula, which is three rows of windows above the upside down stairs. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You guys get the idea. One, two, three. And we want to fill these in using glass pane, just like this. That. That. All here. Perfect. And then we destroy two rows above these because we also have some second story windows as well. Here and here. And we're just going to have brick stairs. Just two rows of them above the window. None upside down or anything like that. We then want to have three more rows of window above. So above each one of these windows, just three rows of glass. Just like so. And then this is going to be it. Although we are going to connect one of these windows to the tree house, which is going to be pretty cool. Or... We will make a, not that you ever see it by the way, but we might make like a little attic window that connects to the treehouse um, or something like that. But so far, we're not quite done, but we, we will finish later like when we, we start adding final details because there's a lot of materials to go through. This is kind of like the back of the house so far. I think that we've done a pretty good job thus far. Really like how this is turning out. Oh, and if you want to jump the gun a little bit, you can place just like upside down quartz stairs all the way along the top of the back of the outside. So, just all the way uh, along the top, uh, in amongst the chimney, um, even like extending towards the front of the house as well. Just kind of like this, right? And that will be perfect. So, next up, we're going to tackle the left side of the house. We're going to start off by placing terracotta in between the front and the back of the house again. So, just where we have the two base rows of terracotta, like this. Then, add a row of bricks on the left and right side, extending up from the bottom to the top. Then, if we place two rows of four upside down stairs, extending from the back to the front and front to the back, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Stick some bricks in between them, and then extend them all the way up, just like this. And then three rows of glass on top of the quartz, so that would be one, and then two, and three, just like this. Two rows of brick stairs on top of the glass. So this would be, I mean, I'm having a hard time here. That would be one. And then this would be two. And then all we have to do is just top up the rest of the empty space with glass. And then that is pretty much this left hand side taken care of. The right hand side is pretty much done as is most of the back, so we're making really good progress here. The next thing that we have to do of course is we have to tackle the front. This looks a little bit ominous because of how big the front is, but I promise you it's not that difficult. Let's tackle the left and right sides first of all. And honestly, once again, we might find it easier to simply carve the windows in. But uh, let, let's try doing it without doing that, actually. So, But what doesn't change is that we should probably connect the right side of this down. And then add two rows of terracotta, just like so. And then when it comes to these windows, I'm simply going to once again add a row of bricks on the left and right sides of this. Just extending upwards vertically. And we're going to have just four upside down stairs. So starting over here on the left, as a matter of fact, on the right side, we add two rows of bricks. The reason being is because if you can see, if we were to extend these terracottas forwards, and if we extend these two rows of bricks forwards to kind of like make the corner part of the house here, then if we wouldn't have had this extra brick, then we'd only have one row and that would look a little bit odd. So... We're going to place upside down quartz stairs here in between the bottom row. And then of course three layers of glass. 
And I think you guys know what might be coming next. We then place two rows of bricks on top of the glass, like this. And then two, or well, not two rows of glass, three rows of glass extending all the way up to the top, just like this, and perfect. So that's what the left side of the house looks like, and the right side of the house is actually identical, so we may as well go and do it now. So on the right-hand side, we want to just extend this um, brick area down. That's probably the mistake that we <laughs> that we made uh, over there, is we probably should have extended like this down to the ground first. Oh, and then we, on the terracotta part just here, and then we can extend the terracotta across and then we can get to work. So that'll be two rows of bricks here on this left side um, because we have the corner. Just an extra row here on the right. Perfect. And then once again, upside down court stairs, that's what kicks everything off. Three rows of glass, two rows of brick stairs, three rows of glass. Doesn't get any simpler than that. And then we can start working our way in towards the center. I guess if that's kind of what we're doing, we're slowly working our way to the front door. So here and here. So let's take a good look at this now. This is what we have. And suddenly, this space has shrank a little bit, hasn't it? It doesn't look as intimidating. But what we can do is we can actually connect the left and right sides together using terracotta blocks. So, all the way down here at the bottom, just two rows of terracotta. Um, they do uh, span all the way from like left to right. There's no parts that like stick out. So, just like this, here and here. And then we'll probably do like the left and right side evenly. So... What we're going to do, shall we start at the bottom? We'll start from the bottom and work our way across. We'll place over here on the left a brick block, two upside down quartz stairs, so one, two, and then three bricks, one, two, three, two upside down quartz stairs, one, two. We then want to place five bricks, one, two, three, four, five. We then want to place two black concrete, one, two. Then we can keep going actually, so five brick blocks, one, two, three, four, five. Two upside down stairs, one, two. Then three brick blocks, one, two, three. Two upside down stairs, one, two, and then a brick block. So perfect, I mean that's all we've got to do. And then what we can essentially do is we can raise up all of the bricks. I don't think that we're going to have any trouble doing that. Nope. We can raise up every single one of the brick blocks all the way up to the uh, to the roof area. Just like this. And here. And once we have hit the roof, we can start adding little individual details. We'll probably do all of the windows first. And then we'll move on to the door and the surrounding area. Because once we start tackling the door, we've actually got a lot to add. So, um, it's not just the door. There's like a whole set of stairs. You guys might remember the stairs scene where Kevin covers the front stairs in ice. And, uh, well, I mean, you guys know, know what happens. A certain particular individual falls off those stairs more times than I can count. <laughs> and uh, this is what we want to have so far. So what we then want to do is on top of all of these sets of uh, upside down quartz stairs, of course, we want to place three rows of glass, one, two, three. We then want to place two rows of bricks or brick stairs, and then three more glass, one, two, three. You guys get the idea. So that's what we want to do. Three glass, two bricks, brick stairs specifically, free glass and we want to do this for every single window area and uh, just whilst I'm in this particular plane of the house and just whilst I have the material out I'm kind of just um, adding all of the brick stairs in. Now what's unique about the front windows specifically these like middle windows on the front is they have shutters. So it was actually harder than, I, I like to admit, trying to figure out exactly what colour they are. Like, all I could identify is they're a really dark colour. They're like, either, they're either black or they're very, very, very dark, uh, dark brown. I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely not sure which it is. So, as we only do have dark oak trap doors, I've decided to opt for those. But, an alternative would be, say, you don't, you don't want to use those. You, you can, like, dig left and right of the windows like this and you can place black concrete or 
whatever color you think it might be next to the windows instead of what we're about to do, which is clad the left and right side of these windows in uh, dark oak trap doors. So it, this is pretty much the entire side of the window. So where we have the glass, where we have the stairs, that's that's what we want to what we want to do. And when it comes to above as well, um, just one row below the window is fine, and just to the top of the glass area is fine as well. So just like this, right? I mean, I'm placing them a bit poorly, but you guys get the idea. So yeah, perfect. And that looks uh, that looks really cool, I think. So um, I have a I don't know why I'm having trouble placing trap doors. Actually, that, 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 that looks a little bit better, and I, I don't know whether I've said this before, but I also, I like the dark oak trap doors because it reminds me of chocolate. It kind of looks like a nice big bar of, like, dairy milk or something, so here and here, that's perfect, and then we can just whip over to this opposite side. Uh, it has just struck me as well that there is another window that we've got to make. I, actually, there's a... There's actually a few windows, come to think of it, because I, I've just thought that there's also the attic windows on the front of the house. I actually didn't add any attic windows on the back of the house, although there's, there should be some, technically, some attic windows on the back of the house, because I'm pretty sure that's where the zip line is from the attic. But um, we'll, we'll see when we get there. We, we might have to add one, um, even though it's not in the original design, because I'm pretty sure that he flees... From, uh, from the attic window, it's not actually from um, like a bedroom window. Although my memory might be uh, my memory might be a little bit off, but I'm sure that you guys all know in the comments, or at least one of you will. I'm I'm pretty sure. But anyway, so here, here, perfect. So that's yes. There we go. So that's looking pretty good now. Where is the last window? The last window is is actually perfect because we've already got the hole here. So. Where we have this like two two gap hole, I simply want you to place one, two, three rows of maybe three rows. Hmm. Actually, you know what? I think we're even going to alter the windows as well. We're, we're yeah, we're going to have three rows of glass, right? So here, and then I'm just going to place underneath this a row of bricks, and I'm going to then place dark oak trap doors left and right of the window. I think that we're going to alter the windows um, because I just realized that we made a slight boo-boo. So, for and it, my, completely my fault, by the way. So, when it comes to the upper set of windows, I'm going to remove the dark oak trap doors. And the, the lower set of dark oak trap doors, I'm going to destroy the brick blocks behind them. And then below them, and then I'm just going to replace all of that area using brick stairs. So, my bad. That, that, that is completely my bad. But there we go. You'll find that, well, or at least I find, that looks way better. And it's, it's a little bit more accurate as well. So, um, very sorry about that slight little mess up there. I guess I was... Uh, because I, I keep thinking about what we're going to be doing next, and I should probably focus on um, what we're actually doing at the moment. But uh, you can have it either way, to be quite honest. It's completely up to you. But then the middle window will look a little bit funky. So this is what we want to have so far. Pretty happy with this. We have two black concretes here marked out for the entrance. I want you to add two more rows of black concrete on top, finalized with a row of white stained glass paint on top of those brick blocks above and then we have to make a door frame it's quite easy on the left and right side of the door frame one two three rows of uh, quartz block one two three rows of quartz block sideways facing smooth quartz stairs on top of these and then here's where we have to grab more materials luckily i don't think we ever use the dark oak trapdoors again so we can get rid of those and um probably the uh, the terracotta as well. I don't want to get rid of too many things. So buttons and we are going to also grab uh, quartz slabs as well. So buttons and quartz slabs. Uh, I'm going to place a door handle in the form of a button middle right of the door. Then I'm going to connect the top of the door together using smooth quartz slabs. Leave half a rose gap, more smooth quartz slabs just like this. So what we then want to do is underneath the door, place brick blocks and extend the brick blocks left to and right to. Place two entire rows in front, one, 
two, just like this. And then we can take the outer corners and we can place quartz blocks on top of these, specifically four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, just like this. So I'm going to stick quartz slabs on the side of this, extend them to the house, like so. Perfect. And then sideways smooth quartz stairs on top of this. And I'm going to extend these to the house also. Just like this. Then we just want to connect these sides together pretty much. So just, just like this, we just want to connect these sides together. Now, I don't know whether we will add or can add. Uh... Oh, it, it might be really that maybe maybe we don't connect this together. Maybe this goes like one row higher. Maybe actually, maybe we'll just place some bricks there. Maybe actually we place like upside down quartz stairs inside of this. My bad. I'm, I'm making some mistakes. I'm sorry, guys. And then smooth quartz slabs across the top of that. I do apologize. So there we go. That that is that is actually way better. And then later on, we will ha add and hang lanterns below. So, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to just extend the brick blocks underneath the pillars towards us each by one. Brick stairs in between, and then I'm going to extend the brick stairs down, and then forwards by three rows, one, two, three, one, two, three, just like this. I'm going to add two whole rows of bricks inside of this, just like this. And then I'm going to place brick stairs in between the bricks, just like that. And then I'm going to add two rows of bricks in front of this kind of like staircase here. So um, this is just going to be just completely in front. And I'm going to fill this in. Perfect. And honestly, it is getting to the point where we're going to have to stop being a little bit stingy with, with these materials. So... For instance, let's let's just grab everything that I think that we need so far. So let's let's just do a little wipe and let's grab um, iron bars. Let's grab lanterns. Let's grab upside down quartz stairs, flower pots, and spruce saplings. Let's also grab for the entrance to the house, which I'm frantically trying to find in my plans. Let's grab brick blocks again. Item fr oh, my bad. Brick blocks, item frames, block of redstone. Don't know how lanterns got back in there. And also we need the beehive. Okay. So iron bars are going to be placed along the sides of this area here. So the, the iron bars are pretty much just along the sides of the staircase here on the left and the side of the staircase here on the right, just like this. And I'm also just going to connect them back to the house as well, just like so. Then, I'm going to place upside down quartz stairs outwards diagonally from the edge of the brick staircase like this. With flower pots and spruce saplings on top slash in the pots, just like so. The lanterns are to hang above the door, so literally just like above the door in uh, just like two of them. There's actually only one, but my door is two rows thick instead of one, so you know it is what it is. So that is what we want to have so far. And then there's another part, important part of the build, I should say. So the important part of the build, and this is going to require, what, what do we need? Uh, flower pots, and I'm going to grab, oh... I, I don't have it. Actually, I'm going to grab it anyway because it is kind of like an important material. It will, of course, be in the item list, but we don't have it with us grey concrete. Four rows of grey concrete want to be placed in front of the brick area. So there's two rows of bricks. We want to have four rows of grey concrete. It, it's pretty much part of the driveway. It's quite a large driveway, and it curves round in a particular uh, fashion as well. There's actually two halves to the drive, like the left and right side, and then one that uh, part of the drive extends to the garage, which is at the uh, back left part of the house over there. So we want to have four rows of grey concrete, 
Then we're going to take this left side of grey concrete here and we're going to leave a gap of two. So one, two. And on this third row here, we're going to place a brick, left, and then up on top of the original. Same thing on this right side. So it'd be here to the right and then on top of the original. Sideways, smooth quartz stairs in the corners. And then, I, I I hope this works on Bedrock. It, it works on Java. Um, we want an iron bar. Lantern on top. Of course it doesn't. Of, of, of course it of course it doesn't work in Java. <sighs> okay, so we have to substitute the iron bar, unfortunately. We already have something which is semi-iron bar-like, which is a wall. We'll use diorite wall instead, but the iron bar would be preferable. So, diorite wall, like this. Lantern on top. Item frame in front of the wall. Block of redstone in there. Perfect. So, now that we have done that, I'm actually very, very happy. I'm going to place upside down quartz stairs all the way along the top of the house now. So... All the way along the top of the house. Just hanging off the very top row of the bricks. Just like this. And it's just going to connect all the way to the right. Oh, we didn't place it here. Oh, we oh there we go. We started placing it there. I wondered when we started doing that. That was kind of uh, that was kind of weird. So this is what we have so far, ladies and gentlemen. And all this, honestly, very very happy with this. I mean, at this at this point in time, it's pretty much we're just wrapping up the details of the house now. So the the main bulk of this is made. I think it's important for us to first of all do the two attic windows that are on the front of the house. So let's chuck all this away for a sec again. And let's grab polished and sight stairs, smooth quartz, glass pane. We're going to grab some polished and sight as well. And that's all we'll have at the moment. So, polished and sight stairs are going to be placed all the way along the top of the house like this. I'm going to grab smooth quartz blocks, and we want to have two windows that are the same width as these, like, inner windows here on the front of the house. So, they will be, like, here and here, but made out of quartz. And then we're going to have the left and right side extend up by two, so one, two, one, two. Glass in between, like this. And then smooth quartz on top of the glass, like so. And then polished and sight stairs extending from the left side all the way up to the top and the right side all the way up to the top. We want to have these stairs overhang a row just like this and then upside down stairs underneath. So we just want to have something which should look like that and that stems from that window in particular and we want one here on the opposite side also. So once again, row of four quarts. We extend the left and right side up. We place white stained glass pane in between. So just like this. And then quartz on top. And in sight left and right. And then all the way up to the top as well. Then we want it to overhang. Just like this. And then upside down underneath. So just like that. So what we will have is this. So pretty happy with that. I think that that is looking pretty cool. I am highly considering also adding a window here on the back. So like where we have this window here. This is kind of like a good candidate. So I, th I think I'm also going to add. Not that I've seen it in the movie. But it must be here. I don't think it's from the second story. I'm, I might be wrong. I don't want to add this. And then it not, not really exist. But it, theoretically. I, I think that it'd be, it be it would make more sense. If there was like a row of polished and inside. Like along the top here. And then quartz stairs just like left and right, just like above this window. And then the same design window. So, you know, just extend up two rows of quartz with glass in between. And then quartz. And then and inside just on the left and right sides, just like this. 
and then if we extend the oh this one annoying position this is uh, I, I wish I didn't make the chimney so here no he, well that one does have to be there too but here perfect and then here 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 and here destroy that upside down just like this and then it would make sense that there would be a little zip line he here because I'm sure it's not from the from a bedroom window from there to that I'm gonna have to check but uh, there we go perfect so that that's what we want to have there um, we can use this polished anon site by the way to just fill in this little back roof so that we made earlier and we can also fill not only fill that in there uh, we can flip over here and we can add a little bit of andensite into the basement entrance. We can add some brick to the left and right side of the basement entrance as well. So just to so that it's not dirt, so it's nice and clean. We can have all of the bricks like this. One a double iron door, like so. And then I, it's, I don't think there's actually any windows surrounding it, so we'll just have bricks. Um, we want to have a door here for the back as well, and then you can even have like a path, you can have like a, a polished and site path leading from the back entrance if you like. Then I'm going to grab some spruce leaves and some iron bars, and we're going to have two rows of spruce leaves on the left and right side where we have these bricks, and then iron bars on top of the bricks as well, just like this. And basically, from here, I mean, j just to give you a visual representation, because I, it's, you might be confused as to why everything's still floating. We're gonna have, we're going to have to build up a lot of snow on the back of the house, right? So, like left and right at the entrance. So that this makes more sense, right? Hopefully, um, we're gonna have to build up a lot of snow because I'd, unless you want it to be grass but I mean you know home alone set at Christmas I mean it makes more sense that it'd be snow um, we're gonna build up an entire layer of snow pretty much like inside the boundary on the back garden here we'll be adding some leaves so some hedges so like around the back here as well we'll probably do the snow adding off camera because it will be uh, very time consuming but um, the snow is actually going to start building up if you actually want to place it now um, the snow is going to build up as soon as where this middle window here on the right side of the house begins So this is the snow line So the snow is going to start here and you can make it a bit more gradual than that Like right if you if you want to like curve it up a bit because it is more of a slope There is a definite like uh, difference in altitude um, Between the like the front and the back of the house So just like this if you want to build it up a bit, but the the end result should be that um, that basically like this here this is this is like just like there's going to be what about on like, let me make sure yeah the, the the reason that you don't see this is because it's like hedging everywhere so like on this entire right side there's like two rows of hedge built up here and then it extends all the way to the back just like this so that's why you never see the terracotta um, but it's kind of cool because it provides a little bit of a contrast. You can still see it But yeah, th hopefully that makes a bit more sense now. I mean, I, I, w I just went on like a, a weird little <laughs> A weird little tangent I suppose but um, Basically, yeah, th this is so this is going to be like the ground level on the back That's that's all I wanted to display to you. So that that looks a lot less weird now, right? Um, there's going to be a wall as well. So there'll be a wall leading from the back right corner of the grid all the way to Almost the front of the grid. It, it's going to come and it's going to line up the, this wall here with That you see that front brick wall. It's actually here, right? It, with that wall over there. That's where this lines up this wall here also starts getting another row thicker when the side of the house begins so you can add another row of bricks extending to here if you want to add yet another row i would recommend where the house begins to sh like where the house ends so here uh feel free to add another row of bricks so d does that make sense there we go and this row of bricks, I mean, it, we're not going to extend it across just yet, but I'm I'm looking for little details that we may have missed on the back. We've actually not missed anything as of yet, nor have we on the side, but it's also worth mentioning on the side, of course, where the snow starts on that side, 
the snow starts on this side as well. So um, let me just make sure it should be, it should be, yeah, it's, yeah, so it, it's here. So if we just follow this, it's, it's where the window starts. Just wanted to make sure because it is slightly differently laid out, but there's, this is where the, there we go. This is where the snow starts to extend upwards. Um, this is actually going to be a wall. So from like here to the same position that we have on the opposite side as well, just to lay things out. So this is also going to be a wall. You can build up the snow as well if you like. Um, in, in just kind of like patches, just like this. Um, this is also going to be like double leaved, double hedged, if you will. So this will all have... Um, two rows of birch hedge kind of just going all the way around the front of the house has kind of like a little might you call it a rock garden i'm not quite sure but um hedge all the way around you, you maybe you want to skip out for the chimney area just to kind of like accentuate it a little bit you can just kind of like leave it off there but that's that what that's what needs to happen pretty much there um, what else can we do? So I'm thinking maybe we kind of like do the front garden and then maybe the roof and then we can kind of like move on to uh, the next part. So when it comes to the rock garden that, I, uh, that I've spoke about, we need to, we still need the leaves. Um, we need oak fence. We need, um, we need the snow as well. Some ferns. And that might pretty much be it, but uh, top snow is also always good to have as well. So on the front here, I'm going to start by extending this hedge that we've placed on the left and right side of the house inwards. So in a double row, I'm going to extend it inwards and join it to here. I want to have a single hedge that starts behind these. These are kind of like podiums for plant parts. So behind here, like leaves and extend these to the right just like this, and join to the hedge that we have. So just like that. Perfect. And then we also want to have another sort of like hedgy area. And it's going to start here. So like where the step starts to drop down, we're going to have the leaves. And we're going to extend all the way to the right. And I think that we'll have it join like this so you can see that we create kind of like a tier system and we can just fill these individual tiers in with snow just like this and it's just to create like a little bit of a depth effect that's that's pretty much all we're doing so here here and here there wants to be a little bit of a build-up of hedging in a couple of different areas. So like here next to this window, kind of like a, we, we want to have like a little double hedge here. Um, next to this window as well, just like a little bit more hedge. Um, in between the windows here, leaving a gap of one, we want to place an oak fence, spruce leaves, oak fence, spruce leaves. There's some like fancy, um, there's some fancy plants. <laughs> hey, look, Mr. Fancy Plants over here. And then we want to place ferns. Uh, we can't actually in the snow. Um, <laughs> might have to grab grass. Um, so ferns, just kind of like on the corners-ish. Doesn't have to be perfect exactly, just like that. Um, and, th and then that's pretty much it. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what it looks like. I mean, it's mostly snow, honestly. So if you want, like, wh where, this, where the detail really does come into fruition is building up the snow as well, like around it. Like, the snow in itself is, like, a pretty cool detail. And y you can be very haphazard with the snow, meaning, you, like, you don't have to be very careful at all. Like, if you, like... What I'm doing right now is I'm holding my finger on the, like, the placing trigger. And, oh, but you can build the ferns into the snow. That's very cool. And uh, I'm kind of just, like, swooping in and about the hedge and garden area. And just building it up like that. And that looks perfectly natural and perfectly fine. Like, if you want to refine that, feel free. But that's the sort of look that we're going for. So why don't we hop over here and do the exact same thing. So like extend this double hedge here all the way round. Placing stuff on snow is so much fun. It requires double the work here. So like extend this double hedge uh, here like this. Um, leaves behind this upside down quartz stair. And then extend the leaves across to the left. 
and then join it to the front just like this so this like an overextending corner and then we also want to have leaves like to the left of this step extending all the way over to the left like this and then backwards and then we have snow and we will also have to substitute a bit of grass in here but just build up the snow just like this and here as well perfect and then we're going to build up the fancy plant which is in between these windows so it's fence leaves fence leaf just like this and then again like we we want to build up like a like a bit of a hedge like it is semi symmetrical but it's not so symmetrical that you can't just kind of like wing it a little bit so like add a fern here um what did we do on the other side i can't even remember so add like a fern here if you wanted to like this this would actually add loads loads more detail because um like you can alternate it with the depths of the snow so if you wanted like you could add a load of ferns in amongst the place and using top snow we can control how much of them you see so that would actually be pretty cool so like this one leave almost entirely exposed this one we will leave exposed this one you can barely see you know like you could you can just control it and that that's like a really cool level of detail so all the same plant of course but they all look a little bit different and um it just i don't know it just looks a little bit more interesting to me anyway so all the way around here we'll just build up snow i mean i'm not gonna go too crazy at this moment in time i mean you can even if you want like obviously use snow blocks as well to expedite the process um but something like this looks fine you can even add some ice especially along here you could add some ice actually that might be a fun little what be the word easter egg to add a little bit of like ice and packed ice and stuff um it'd be kind of funny like just to add like a little bit of ice and packed ice because obviously this is where I really can't remember uh remember both of their names but i'm pretty sure the marv is the like the tall goofy one and i cannot remember the guy that al pacino plays but you know the the, the like boss of the wet bandits i suppose is um like this is where he gets pretty much taken out by the step so it'd be kind of cool if uh, if we just had a little bit of ice there and of course you, that, that would it would also make sense to place some on the back as well but it's kind of like a little uh, a little bit of an easter egg i suppose but yeah that's looking pretty cool what else yeah i mean that that looks that looks pretty awesome honestly like i'm, I'm pretty happy with that um as a whole what else can we do well we've got to do the roof that that is that is for certain like the roof absolutely has to be done um so let's yeah let's do that next so the roof is it's so easy it's made out of polished and site stairs and polished and site so uh, what we essentially want to do is first of all we'll start by extending an entire row of polished and site stairs around the top of uh, of the brick area so just like this so this is how it's going to start but this isn't how it's going to finish um so just going all the way around the top of this um literally like where you can like it's it's not meant to be like a rectangle um it's meant to literally snake around um what we have so just like this here that's perfect and then we want to add how many more rows at least two more we want to add two more rows of polished and size stairs like this so um again going all the way around we we will make it to we'll we'll make a cap of two so that'll be here as well so i'm just going to mark that out so uh just to take a little mental note i uh, i don't want to accidentally like zone out and then before you know it this the the roof looks weird so that's going to go all the way in between all of these windows the windows will join into the roof no need to even worry about those whatsoever and um, the reason that i'm making a big deal out of like only two more rows of the roof like this is because we're going to isolate the center part of the roof and we're going to make it uh higher than the rest of the roof um probably by uh, only a couple of rows probably yeah I, do I don't want to make it like double the size but just two rows will do um yeah we'll, we'll take we'll like make a rectangle so hang on Oh, why has this got to be so tricky? So we'll play. Yeah, if if we just place a block here, then there we go. That's easy. 
And then I don't have to, yes I do have to place a block there. And be easier if I had something to place in front like this. There we go. And then perfect. And then we can add the final row. So yeah, we'll turn the center of the house into a rectangle. And then we will simply, I mean it kind of, it, it's not too far fetched. Like it's quite easy to do. Um, so here and here because like the the big part of the house i mean the, the house separates into like little shapes anyway like the central part of the house i think it's about 30 rows wide um we'll just take that and we'll extend it to the back we'll make it all nice and smooth make it look good and then uh, and then we'll do it so here here i'm not actually sure if i don't think i actually have to place these differently it's the next row it's very very tricky by the way you know like when it's when it's kind of like a peculiar shape like this it's it's actually taking way longer than i thought it would to get all of these placed um also thinking about the next set of details that we have to add so once the roof is complete we have to add in the garage like that's that's a huge huge part like we have to add in the garage there's a large double garage at the uh, at the back of the house which uh, definitely needs adding um, a little bit of movie trivia as well as you might remember like when when the the family are like trying to figure out exactly like I think we'll make this chimney a little little thicker too when the family are trying to figure out like what did what did we remember we no we possibly couldn't have left any kids behind anything like that no oh we left the garage open that's right that's that's what we're forgetting like it's uh, so it's it's a uh, pretty decent uh, it's, it's part of it. So now we have three rows of andensite stairs like this. And then we are going to turn the middle part. And you might even be able to see which part we're going to do. We're going to turn it into a rectangle. So like on the foot, like the front corner here, I'm going to take like, mark this out with a brick. I'm going to place an andensite stair here. And then I'm going to run an andensite stair like right to the back. So like here for example, or maybe from here, that might make a little bit more sense, so like from this, yeah, from this window here to here, and then if we extend, is, is that what we should do? And then hang on, if we extend this window backwards, let me make sure that this works out, so, and then extend this back, it's because that window shouldn't be there, is, is the thing, so um, that's, that's why it's not, we, we might just have to disregard that window, to be honest, and we might just have to work with, like, this window. So, yeah, starting from here, so, like, we'll take this row of and sight, we'll extend it around, and then we'll extend this to the back. So, we'll just disregard that window, and then we want to have, we'll take the opposite side of this window, we'll connect it to the other window that we have on the front of the build, like this, here, and here. And then we'll take this side of the window and we'll just like run it round to the side. So here and then here and then we'll extend this straight back. So just to here, right? And yeah, so we'll extend it back to here and then we'll just extend this across. Well, actually, I mean, we can just... It can follow the shape. I mean, it's, it's a different part of the house. It's, as long as the middle part of the roof is extended upwards, as long as the middle part of the roof is different, it doesn't necessarily matter what shape it is precisely. But, like, here... And then, it ca and then this actually connects to that part of the window. So... Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe what we have to do is kind of like go with the grain and kind of just like destroy this. Because you got obviously you guys will have built this window now as well because I did. But like, that, just again, it doesn't matter that much. But you can see uh, the edge of the lines here, right? So like this middle part of the house, it wants to have a roof that is a little bit bigger than the side parts. And we are going to just do two rows. So we've actually done the first row. And um, this is going to be the second row. And then all we're going to do is we're going to fill the middle of uh, the roofs in with andensite. So that's why we have the polished andensite block. Um, I'm not going to make them any taller because the, the roofs aren't that tall anyway, like on the left and right side already. Um, I don't want to turn it into kind of like a spire or something like that. Uh, so I don't want to extend them too much, but... Yeah, this, I'm finding this very tricky. I know that I've already said that a million times already. That shouldn't be placed that way. Um, but, 
it's uh, it's very very snaky this roof so here and then this will connect and that is it's kind of perfect as well because like the top of the windows connect um, the they apex like where the top of the roof is like it just it just all kind of like flows together nicely So there you go like this is an even better example. That's perfect I really like that and then we just fill the top of this in with and inside and then we'll do the same on the left and right And then and then that's the roof done um, The chimney is higher than the roof um, even though we kind of just yoloed it um, I'm pretty happy with that it doesn't have to be like extraordinarily tall um, Can we see it from the front of the house? At a distance, you can, and I don't want it. I don't want it to be like monstrously tall and make it look strange. So I'm going to be quite happy. Um, what else can we do? By the way, you might be wondering to yourselves: to the roof, like, is is this the only detail that we're adding? We're just adding under sight. Well, no, of course we can add top snow. Um, we can add snow to everything. Um, you, that, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's um, it's it's a process that takes a lot of time. So I mean, it doesn't have to have every block either. Like, um, it actually makes sense that a roof wouldn't have necessarily, like, snow everywhere as heat riser. So if you've got your heating on in your house, it's very possible that if you have, like, poor insulation, that, uh, that heat will escape through the roof and thus melt the snow. Um, and it'll look a little something like that. Again, feel free to take more time on it as you, as you like. I mean, you might want it to be visible and you can see it from the side of the house, um, you might want it to be a bit more visible than that, it's up to you. But let's add these wings on the left side and right side of the house. We'll also add some top snow to those as well. Not going to go over the top though. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go over the top and we will add all of the... Like, we will prune it later. So, you know, we'll, we'll make it absolutely perfect later on as, uh, as it goes. So here... And here and again yeah we not every block has to be inhabited by snow so over here as well um i just want to i basically just want to be able to see it more than anything like as long as there's the appearance that snow is up here um that's actually good enough for me so destroy those here here and here and we can add in all of this top snow and what will we be doing next? So, the garage, I think we do next. We're going to do the garage. We're going to do some ter uh, some terraforming. And then I think that we're going to do the treehouse. Or we might do the treehouse before the terraforming because the, the terraforming is going to be quite time consuming. I'm not sure what order we're going to do it in, but this this is looking quite impressive, I think, isn't it? Like, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking so far. This is a pretty large build. And yeah, this, yeah, very, very happy. Perfect. So that's, that's what we've got so far. The next thing that we are going to do is tackle the garage. Okay, so for the garage, we are going to need... I might even clear... Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to clear my inventory. It's getting too full. I'm going to grab brick blocks. We will need iron doors. We'll need some white stained glass pane, spruce wood stairs, sp uh, quartz stairs. We will need maybe buttons as well. And I don't think we really need too much else. We will be needing grey concrete as we progress, though. We will be needing that snow back, unfortunately. Um, but anyway, for now, this will do. In the back left-hand corner of the grid, so literally right here, the back left-hand corner, we're going to move one row forward and place five bricks. One, two, three, four, five, extending up from the ground. Extend forwards by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to extend that ninth block across to the right by 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we're going to extend it down to the ground as well. We're then going to extend back and join all the way over to where we very first started. Then we can join this down to the corner as well, join the corner down to the ground. And then we're simply going to seal up the left, right, and back sides of the garage. 
And then we're going to add two doors. There's specifically a double door of the garage. Very fancy, very large. No surprise. I mean, by the way, upon re-watching Home Alone, I didn't realize how big the house is. This thing is a mansion. It's huge. It's not just like a regular suburban house. Like, I, in my head, I thought it was. It's, it's absolutely massive. The, the McAllisters are loaded. So on the left, right, and back sides of the house, we just want to, of the garage, we want to have bricks. On the left side here, we're going to have two extra rows of bricks. And then we're gonna, we're just gonna add a row of bricks along the bottom here because this is going to be elevated. On the right side, we'll have an iron door with a glass above. And then we will have bricks to the left of this. And then we're going to have a three row wide garage door, so leave a gap of three. Add a center row of bricks, kind of like separating this. And then we're going to add two garage doors. So, I mean, you can leave this open if you want, although I've, there's, there's nothing in the garage, so I'll probably leave those doors closed. I mean, we're, we're a little bit less forgetful than Mr. McAllister, but we're going to add some smooth quartz stairs in here. This is one row behind, just to have garage doors, two garage doors, just like this. Perfect. And then we just have to... Uh, there's a little bit of a window as well. This is like... Above the central point here, a row of three glass. One, two, three. Then we take the center point and we extend it right and left, just like this. And then we're going to build up brick blocks, just like this, on the left and right sides. And we're just going to turn it into a triangle, which will culminate in a point. There we go. Perfect. So, same thing wants to be done on the back, minus the window, so just like this. And then that's pretty much going to be the garage done. Like, we're going to add the roof, of course, but then there's not really any other details to add. So here, the side of the garage, uh, the roof side of the garage on the left and right is made out of quartz, as is the edge of the roof, but the inward part of the roof is made out of spruce stairs. By the way, just reminding myself, we need smooth quartz slabs. So the outer edge of the roof, just going all the way around, just like a trim, is quartz, just like this. And at the very top, we'll have quartz uh, slab. And then the inner part of the roof, spruce stairs. So we'll have all of the quartz stairs here and here, just like this. Perfect. There we are. Nice with a quartz at the top upside down quartz stairs here and that will be perfect nice there we go just like that and then brick blocks across the top got to do the back as well but that's the exact same thing spruce wood stairs just remembered as well we have two very large trees to add at the front of the house that's a big deal. We will also have to add a driveway. There's a lot, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a simple house whatsoever. I hope that you didn't start this tutorial thinking like, oh, we're just, this is gonna be a really cool, simple build. No, no, there is so much more. <laughs> it's actually not loads more. We are coming towards the end, but um, just a bit of terraforming out and some trees and stuff. And the tree house, more importantly, which I think is a really cool, um, I mean, it's very simple. It's actually like a really retro tree house. It's, it's awesome. It's like when I think of a tree house, like it's, it's this tree house that we're going to be building. Um, not quite yet, but probably before we terraform. I do sort of want to add the driveway and stuff though, because we, we will have to terraform around the driveway. So I, I keep using the word terraform as if like we're doing something drastic. It's a bit of landscaping, really. Better, better landscaping. Doing some gardening, but uh, we'll extend the spruce stairs. Finally, just like this, and then that will be the garage. Looking good. So, now that we've done this, we're going to raise up this wall that we have. So, we're going to extend this wall here all the way to the garage or garage. 
and we will add another row onto the wall. If you can remember what we did over there, we added a second layer of brick starting where the house started. And then where the house ended, which is like here pretty much, although a different point on the opposite side, I think, here we add, we bump up the number of bricks an extra level. Along the entire back of the house, I'm just going to have a three row high level of bricks. So pretty much just like this. So here, I mean, I don't know why it stops placing um, at a random point in time, but um, just all the way across. Yeah, I, d I don't know why. That's so weird. Almost as if, uh, almost as if I'm faster. Than, uh, than the brick placing. That's so strange. Have they done something to Mike? Has there been an update that I'm unaware of where like we move ever so slightly faster than we used to? I don't know, but can circumvent it by doing that. Um, anyway, that's what the back of the... I'm, I'm actually really happy with the back of the house so far. I think we've got so, uh, most of the cool details. Obviously, the tree house is probably one of the cooler ones. But this is... I think this is my favorite part of the house. I don't know why. I really, really like that. It uh, It's very tied to the scene. Um, so, I keep talking about this drive, don't I? It's, it's about time that we actually did something about it. So, I'm going to grab grey concrete. And there's going to be a row of grey concrete... Pretty much the width of the two garage doors thick. There's going to be a row of grey concrete extending towards the front of the house. So it's going to be this thick. And it's going to be at this particular level. Like to where the snow is. So like the, the driveway wants to be one row higher at this point here. And then it's going to drop down a level of course. And it's going to go all the way to the edge, so all the way to here, so pretty, all the way to, you know what, all the way to the front of the build, like that's how far the driveway is going to be, I'm just going to do the outline of the driveway because I, I can fill it in by myself later, it's not really interesting, so here, and then it's going to go all the way here. Never work with snow. Stone really does make things a lot more difficult. Uh, here. And there we go. Perfect. So you, you guys get a good... At snow or animals, apparently. Polar bears. I'm surprised Kevin didn't manage to find a polar bear for the, for the wet bandits. So there we go. So a really, really long drive leading all the way from here all the way to there. That's perfect. But this drive also wants to connect to the drive that we have at the front of the build. So, just in front of the entrance, we're going to join this together, just like this. Um, uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm not missing anything either, but I'm just going to connect this, and then I'm going to have to check my plans, just to make sure that I'm definitely not doing something a little bit silly, which would not surprise me whatsoever. So, here... Oh, my bad, so just like that. That is perfect. In the front of the house also, there is actually some hedge as well. So this actually stems from the brick area where we have the quartz stairs. And it's the hedge basically just goes all the way over to the left here. And it cuts off like where we have the hedge over there, just like for the side of the house there. And it's going to do the same thing all the way here, over here on the right side as well. And then we're going to loop the little driveway around it, so here and here. And then if we just leave like a gap of one, and then we have like a row of four dug into the ground, like here, grey concrete. And then we want to also, we'll extend this here like so just like this and then we'll just we, we'll make it like curve a little bit as well it won't be so um it won't be so boring like we'll just add like an extra block here for example just to make it look as though that the road curves a little bit so here so one two three four just like this there we go, and then take the corner out like that. Then we'll add the rest of the grey concrete just like this, here. 
Perfect, so that is the end result of that. So, I mean, if you want, you can, like, curve it a little bit more. Like, there's a, there's no reason that you can't, you can't, you can just take, like, a couple of, I mean, and, and cover it in snow by all means as well. Like, it doesn't all have to be visible. Like, it'd make more sense if, if it wasn't all visible, quite honestly. But we want to do that here, and we... Like, we can, we can curve it here as well, so, like, take some of that out, and then... We'll just leave that, actually. I mean, it, it makes sense that there'd be a curve here and then not one there. And then that's perfect. And then this can lead to the outer boundary. So, all the way to here. One, two, three, four. And then we want to have a road out in front of the house and this is where we could even i am contemplating making a little van as well like it's it's only just occurred to me that i that it'd be kind of cool if we add like the the uh, wet bandits of van to the front of the house so that's something that we might do um two three four um, I'm sure that it, I mean, it can't be that hard to, uh, to come up with a van rather quickly. It's not, it's not really got, I mean, I can't remember what the branding is. Like, there's a little pun on the side of the van, but there's no need to add that. But, like, a plain white van might be, might be kind of cool to add. Probably will do that. I mean, we, we've went to this much effort so far. We might as well go the little extra mile and add the van at the end. But that will mean that I'll have to go out and design it and stop the tutorial and stuff. But I'm sure that that'll be, that'll be fine so yeah this is this is the road that's just in front of the house this is just in front of the street this connects everything together so let's say that you did just let's say that you wanted to plop this into your city or suburbs or wherever then this is this is how it would just connect to the road just like this i hope that i'm explaining these things well enough um, but more so the aerial view that i'm about to give you will probably explain it a little bit better there we go. So you can see the outline for all of the roads and the street now. And um, like this is a pavement area. This is this would be like pavement, and this will ha this would be like this is going to have like built up snow around it. You can even use say like pods all and stuff. I think I think that we will because you know how slow get snow it gets all slushy and such. So. Um, it makes sense if we had like I don't know so even soul soil would do like even some pods are so something like it just like a little bit just, just to show that the path is worn you know maybe maybe just like this just, just to show that the path is worn just just something like that will do so we've done all of the connecting roads so that's that's all ready we have to do the trees now the trees are very very easy to do basically spruce wood and if you grab yourself some dark oak fence as well or yeah dark oak fence will do and there's two very large trees on the front of the house so in this corner here somewhere in this corner of snow like where the driveway connects to each other a two by two square of uh of dark oak wood or spruce wood again it doesn't really matter um it doesn't really want to go too much higher than the house but you can make it a little bit higher than the house so it's going to be a nice square um it doesn't have to be all even at the top by all means um nor does it have to be all even like even going all the way up like it wants to look a little bit random maybe something like this will do um, we're going to add a branch or so, and the branch is just going to kind of like extend out, kind of like in this fashion, and we're going to add some dark oak fence around it. I'm intentionally being random because it, it just looks a little bit better. You can even add a counter branch to the tree, so something to just like balance the tree out a little bit, just on this side with like fence and stuff as well, if you want to, so just something like that. And that that's all you have to do, just like a really simple tree we want to have the same sort of thing over here on the right maybe vary it a bit so this one will be a little bit more inwards we don't want to cover up the house though either and i mean that's pretty much it like it's going to be a two by two sort of square is kind of like the trunk of uh, trunk of the tree i wonder if that's that that could be a tongue twister actually like if you said that loads of times fast trunk of the tree trunk of the tree trunk of the tree um and we want to raise all of this up just like so and perfect my tv is trying to turn off that's excellent and there we go i mean something like that's fine you know like vary it up a little bit and then maybe we can even add branches like a little bit lower but again we don't, we don't really want to cover up the house either so like this and then we can add fence around it just like so 
and then we can do the same thing. No, you know what? We'll just leave it like that. We'll we'll vary it up a bit. And there we go. Perfect. So we've got a couple of rows of a couple of rows. We've got a couple of trees out in the front of the house now. We've got the the roads are ready to be done. They've just got to be dug out and replaced with some grey concrete. The roof is done. The garage is done. All the details are done except for the treehouse. And also that van that we're definitely going to be doing at the end. Okay. Treehouse. We're going to actually have to dump a lot of materials and grab a load of new ones that we don't have already. They'll all be in the item list, of course, but I don't have them. So let me dump them out and then let me grab everything that we need. Okay, so this is everything that we're going to be using for the treehouse. So we're going to start off with spruce wood, ladders, oak planks, oak stairs, oak signs, spruce fence, dark oak fence, spruce wood slabs, and iron bars. So the position of the treehouse is supposed to be around here like where we have this window along the back wall here we're kind of going to want to line it up so i'm thinking that we have the treehouse start where the left side of this window is so if we like trace along down the side of this window we come all the way to the back we hit this back wall and we place nine one two three four five six seven eight nine might even make it a little bit tough no nine will do actually nine spruce wood extending up from the ground hopefully you guys understand why I did that positioning going to stick an oak plank on top of this and then we're going to extend that oak plank to the first of all we're going to extend it back one and then we're going to extend it left by two no we're going to extend it left one and then we're going to extend it right two one two and then we're going to turn this into a solid rectangle then we're going to place four rows in front of this one two three four and then we're going to place upside down oak wood stairs on the sides, and we may even have to extend it an extra row forwards. But upside down, sideways facing oak wood stairs on the sides, just like this. And what we're then going to do as well is you can, the point in which where was it? It was about here. Yeah, the point in which do we we place the oak the spruce wood like the, for the trunk? I want you to extend it up just a a bit higher. So just keep, keep like extending it up like this. Um, we also want to be able to get into the bottom of the treehouse, so if you just make a hole, and then we can add ladders to the uh, trunk of the tree just like this. You're going to want to leave it off the bottom because we're, we're going to be extending the floor up, but we want to be able to get into the tree like so. And then on the back corners, well, on, on the entire back of the treehouse, I'm going to add three rows of oak planks, so one, two, three. And then we're going to extend the left and right sides forwards by four rows. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, just like this. I'm going to extend the rows forwards, like so. And then on the right side here, I'm going to take the bottom and extend inwards one, two. And then up two, one, two. And then right, that's perfect. And then extend across to the top here. And then extend down. And that's where the entrance to the treehouse is going to go. Or kind of an exit. Like there's no way for it to go. Like this, It's technically the entrance because there's going to be a zip line. But um, we're going to place upside down oak wood stairs all the way around the edge of this. And then spruce fence around the edge of this. There's like a little bit of a... Uh, of kind of like a barrier, a railing around the top of this. We're going to use oak signs because there's not really windows or anything in the treehouse. It's just kind of like holes. So we're going to use oak signs in these sorts of positions. So like here, like this, just to kind of demonstrate that the treehouse is... And you know, it's, it's seen better days, it's seen better days, but like if you just chunk out some of the treehouse, and you could even, if you want, you could even leave like a hole back here as kind of like a... Um, as an Easter egg again, like when uh, when Kevin like puts his feet through the back of the treehouse, you might even want to leave like a hole, like he zip lines, and then his leg like fall out the end. But um, uh, we can just like ch like like I keep saying, like chunk out some of it, make it look a little bit more rustic, might be the word. Upside down, oak wood stairs want to hang off the left and right sides of the top, just like this. So here and here, and then we want to have spruce wood slabs 
for the top, for the roof of the treehouse. And these slabs want to extend one row over, just in front, just like so. And then the slabs are extended backwards like this, here, and here, and then here, like this. Perfect. So there we go. I mean, that's looking pretty good so far. There's also a tire swing. So we're just going to hang this probably like where the body of the treehouse starts here. Like if we place a few iron bars, just like this hanging down, like so. Here. Here. So almost to the ground. We've got to be careful, but almost to the ground we'll hang the iron bars. And I want to make sure that we don't need anything else at the moment. Like, all, all we need really is to, like, the, the top of the treehouse, we just want to mess it up a bit using some, like, spruce uh, spruce wood, kind of like this. And then add some, like, dark oak fence. Because it's made in an actual tree. And, like, the top of the tree is just kind of, like, a little bit bare at the moment because of winter, of course. And that's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with this. So we can chuck this away. Uh, for the tire swing, we just need to finish it off using black concrete, stone buttons. L we need a loom, black banner, banner pattern, um, specifically the school charge, and then white dye, and also some chains. Now, for the tire swing, we stick a black concrete underneath the iron bars, stone button in front, loom on this back wall here, going to crack this open, chuck a black banner, the pattern, and white dyne here and we basically just want to make skull and crossbones so that's what we're going to have um we're going to hang this on the edge like specifically the side of the edge of the roof here there's just like a basically just like a skull and crossbones that's i, I don't know why i guess kevin's a pirate so we want to just hang that off the side the reason for the chain is that the chain is going to attach up, like up left diagonally of the door here and this is basically just the zip right wire rope just like this so this is going to attach ideally we'd be able to like extend it upwards and um but chain doesn't really do that you know like we we can do this i mean this, this isn't a bad alternative but like it, it just wants to join to the window area um and it just wants to look as though it's connected together it doesn't actually matter if it is and then we can just have so we can just have something that looks like that. I mean, as long as there's like a visible sort of line, I mean that's that's pretty. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, I, I I quite like that. I mean, if you wanted to take it one step further, maybe we could use a sign or maybe even a fence, like an oak fence or maybe a fence gate, something like that. And we can attach like this, and that looks like uh, the apparatus that you would use to actually like zip down if you wanted to. But anyway, coming inside the treehouse now, there's not that much detail inside the treehouse. Whoops. <laughs> there's not that much detail inside the treehouse to add. But there's a there's like, I think it's a sleeping bag, but I'm going to use a light blue bed. Green carpet, yellow carpet, red carpet, paintings, and a lantern. The lantern is going to hang from the top of the tree here. Light blue bed is going to be like the sleeping bag. Going to litter the floor because there's just loads of light trash up here. So just litter the floor with different varieties of carpet. Going to stick a painting here on the right because I'm pretty sure there's like a poster on the wall or something. But if not, I'm yeah, that's that's the one that I want the white one specifically. And this is pretty much Kevin's treehouse. I mean, there's not too much more to it to be quite honest. And Ladies and gentlemen, we are rapidly getting to the point where we're almost done with this build. I know it's very sad to say, isn't it? Because, you know, we've put so much time and effort into this. But what we're going to do, first of all, I think, before we make the van, because I definitely want to add the van, I think that's going to be the final touch on the house, is I want to landscape a little bit. So, what am I going to be doing that's not going to be on recording? Because there, there, a lot of this doesn't have to be on recording. I need to take snow... Actual snow, I think that's that's snow, perfect. I need to take snow and also some grey concrete. Snow and top snow are going to be used to fill in the back of the house here. So I want to have the entire back of the house, I need to bump it up a level with snow and then add some top snow around it so that it doesn't look too flat. I also have to add all of the grey concrete into the driveway and the actual like street as well so that's what i'm going to have to do and i'm also going to be adding top snow where possible then we are going to finish up by adding the wet bandits van 
Um, probably in the driveway. I might even add it here because it's quite a big area. Like, I'll either, I'll either add it here or maybe, like, over here. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet, but probably on the drive. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be a very, very boring process. I'm also going to add some uh, black concrete behind the windows. It's going to be a very, very boring process that you're not going to want to watch me do, because it's going to take a long time. And I'll be back once I've done it, and I'll show you the end result, and we'll also make the van together at the very end. Back in a moment. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have finished landscaping. I'm pretty happy with it. I've not went too overboard, but as you'll be able to see, I've, of course, added in all of the roads and pavement and stuff but I have built snow up in areas that I think that snow would probably be built up in so like at the side of the house where no one probably walks and like at the side of the walls and stuff like it. just being very very careful to build up snow in areas where it probably remain untouched like more so towards the back walls and I imagine that it'd be trampled down mainly like in the center of the back garden and stuff so you know trying to make it nice and natural not going too overboard but you you know you do you. I mean, this entire right side might be an example of where I probably used a little bit too much, but I suppose it does depend on the style that you like. And once you have done this for yourself, and of course, please do pause the video if necessary. I don't expect you to have immediately, in a flash, replicated what took me a little while to do for myself. But now it's time for us to tackle the van. So this is the van. It's the OK plumbing business, which is pretty funny considering they're the wet bandits, they flood people's home and they're just OK. I mean, it's, it's pretty funny. Uh, these are all the materials that we are going to be using for it. So we're going to start off with smooth stone, light blue wool, iron door, glass pane string, light blue carpet, black concrete item frames and ladders. Unfortunately, uh, there's a terracotta that would be more suited to the colour, but carpet's the way to go here. Light blue terracotta would have been perfect for colour, but unfortunately, can't do it. So, uh, we're going to start the van off by placing, and by the way, I'm going to have it in the driveway, kind of like facing outwards like this. Um, I'm going to start off with a black concrete, and I'm going to place a smooth stone slab in front of it. Extend to the right by two, so like one, two across the opposite side. Then black concrete behind. Three smooth stone slabs, one, two, three. And behind the other one, two, one, two, three. Black concrete behind each. Smooth stone slabs behind each. Fill all the way in between in. Then at the front of the van, we're going to place light blue wool here across the front. A row behind. We're then going to extend the rows backwards, both of them, across the back to create kind of like a... It sort of looks like a tooth. Huh. Anyway, on the back of the van, we're going to have an iron door. Because, well, you know, vans have doors. Um, we're going to also have a, a screen, which is going to be glass pane across the horizontal part of the van, like the second row in. Then light blue wall built up around the glass, extending towards the back. Then a strip of smooth stone slab on the left and right sides of the van, pretty much on top of the rows of the light blue extending forwards on top of the glass. And then light blue carpet on top of the remaining glass. Couple of black concrete behind it. Leave a gap, or maybe you leave two gaps and then stick a black concrete. Smooth stone slabs in between, or if you really are bothered, string with blue carpet, light blue carpet, like this. Then, we're going to have a ladder for the grill of the vehicle. And by the way, we're also going to use light blue carpet for the bonnet. Item frames on the front two corners, like this, on the front and the, the sides. Item frames on the back. And then, to finish this off, we need white concrete, orange, red, stone buttons, trip wire hooks. Red concrete is for the back two uh, brake lights. Orange concrete for the indicators or blinkers or turn signals, whatever. White concrete for the headlights. Tripwire hooks for where the doors would be if we had doors. And then stone buttons for the center of the wheels. And unfortunately, like, I mean, if you want to, you can do this, but it, it's just not the same. I mean, we do have warped signs that you can have, like, it's literally like, oh... Uh, 
but the lettering's like red, so it, it doesn't work, but you if you want to, you can just put like OK there and have like a little... Again, it's, it's nice to have a little, uh, a little couple of Easter eggs hidden about the place. Like, there's a few of them in this build, and honestly, ladies and gentlemen, that, like, that is the last part of this tutorial. That is absolutely it. I, I don't think we're going to do any more. We're done. So hopefully, all being well, ladies and gentlemen, this is what your house should look like once it has been 100% fully completed. I do hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please do remember to hit that like button, as it would really help me and the channel out very, very much. As you might imagine, I spent a lot of time on this video, and I'm really happy with this. I think this has turned out really well, so please do hit that like, and subscribe to the channel for more. This is probably the last video that we will be seeing before Christmas, and maybe up to the new year. We will have to see, but I do hope that you have a good Christmas. I do hope that you have a very happy new year as well. And I do hope that you want to check out all of my other content, which you'll be able to find in the card system, the description below, and the recommended videos to the right or underneath the video, depending on what platform you're using. But thank you so much, everybody, for watching this. I really do appreciate all of you. I hope that you enjoyed this video, you filthy animals, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.